Hi there, today we're going to talk about GCF and LCM, and we're going to look at a trick that's going to make it uh, very simple to find the GCF and LCM of any set of numbers. GCF stands for Greatest Common Factor, so keyword being factor. LCM stands for Least Common Multiple, keyword being multiple. We're going to dig into what that means and how to find this for different sets of numbers. So um, leading into the discussion of GCF, we're going to talk about what it means to be a common factor. That's the C and F in GCF. So if I'm looking at a pair of numbers like 20 and 40, I might first start by listing out all of the factors of 20, and I could use a factor rainbow for that. So I know that 1 times 20 is equal to 20. I know that 2 times 10 is equal to 20, and I know that 4 times 5 is equal to 20. So therefore, the factors of 20 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. They're the numbers that you can divide 20 by to get an even a result. I could do the same thing for 40. So I know that 1 and 40 could be multiplied to equal 40. I know that 2 and 20 can be multiplied to equal to 40. I know that 4 and 10 could be multiplied to be equal to 40. And I know that 5 and 8 could be multiplied to equal to 40. So now I have my list of factors of 20 and factors of 40. And I want to take a look at which ones they have in common. So I see that they share 1. I see they share 2 and 4 and 5 and 10, and 20. They don't share 8 or 40. So if I were to list out the common factors of 20 and 40, my list would look like this. 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. Those are all the common factors. But if I want the greatest common factor, I want the biggest one on that list. And that would be 20. So the greatest common factor, the GCF of 20 and 40, is 20. Now, with smaller numbers, like 20 and 40, this could be a reasonable method to use, but you also have to know all the factors of the number. Once the numbers get bigger, it becomes a huge waste of time to solve it this way. So I'm going to show you another method called the cake method that's going to give us the same answer. So for the cake method, what you're going to do is picture an upside down wedding cake that looks like this. So here's a regular wedding cake. Our cake is going to kind of look the opposite of that. It's going to look like that, but upside down. So I'm going to take my two numbers, 20 and 40, and I'm going to put them in a little box like this. My job now is to come up with any number, any number in the world that I could divide 20 by and 40 by. I'm going to start off easy with two. If you could think of a bigger one, though, that's okay to use. Now I'm going to divide both of those numbers by two. 20 divided by 2 is 10, so I'm going to put the, mess the uh, answer right there. 40 divided by 2 is 20, I'm going to put that answer right there. And now I'm going to make the second layer of my cake. And now I am left with 10 and 20. I have to think of a number I could divide both 10 and 20 by. I'm going to choose 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2, so I'm going to put that answer there. 20 divided by 5 is 4, I'm going to put that answer there and I've made another layer of my cake. Two and four still have a common factor, so I can keep going. Two and four have a common factor of two. Two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two. And here's the next layer of my cake. You can see if you look at the shape I'm creating upside down, it makes that wedding cake shape. I'm left with one and two. The only common factor that one and two have is one. Once you have a 1 in your cake on the outside, you're done and you can stop. So to find the GCF, I have to look at the frosting of my cake. The frosting is all of this on the outside. I have to multiply those numbers to get the GCF. So in this case, it's going to be 2 times 5 times 2 times 1, and that equals 20. So I could use this method to find the GCF instead of listing out all of the factors. It doesn't always take all these steps though. So if I shrink this 
and start over from the beginning. 5, 20, and 40. You might have noticed from the beginning that you could divide them both by 20. 20 divided by 20 is 1. 40 divided by 20 is 2. And now I'm down to that 1 and 2 again. The only common factor there is 1. 1 and you're done. Here the numbers on the outside are 20 and 1. 20 times 1 equals 20. So that's a shorter version of the same method. And it doesn't matter how many steps it takes you. As long as you don't make any math mistakes, you'll get the same answer. So that's the cake method. We're going to try that with some other problems. So we're going to try the cake method with 8 and 10. I'm going to set up 8 and 10 in a cake. And I'm going to think about something I could divide 8 by and 10 by. 8 and 10 are both divisible by 2. They're both even numbers. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And now my next layer of the cake has 4 and 5. They don't have a common factor except for 1. 1 and you're done. I need to get the frosting. 2 times 1 equals 2. The greatest common factor of 8 and 10 is 2. 2 is the largest number that I could divide both 8 by and 10 by. Pause the video and try to find the GCF of 24 and 36 on a piece of scratch paper, then come back when you're ready to see the answer. Hopefully you're ready to see the answer now. So if I set up 24 and 36 in my cake, I actually know a pretty big number I could divide them both by, but I'm gonna go smaller just so I can show you a little bit of uh, more steps in the cake. I'm gonna go with four. 24 divided by four is six. 36 divided by four is nine. 6 and 9 could both be divided by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 2 and 3 only have a common factor of 1. So when I go to get the frosting on my cake, 4 times 3 times 1 is 12. 12 is the GCF of 24 and 36. You may have gotten 12 with a different looking cake, and that is fine. As long as you get the answer 12, you're correct. How about this next one, 7 and 15? Set them up in a cake. There are no common factors of 7 and 15. The well, I shouldn't say that. The only common factor is 1. There's no helpful common factors. There's nothing I could do to get to the next step of my cake. Remember, once you have 1, you're done. So, multiplying all the numbers on the side of my cake, I just get 1. 1 is the largest number that I could divide both 7 and 15 by. They don't share any other factors. The last thing I want to talk about for GCF is what to do if you have more than two numbers. With GCF, it doesn't matter. You could have as many numbers as you want, and you solve it the same way. So now I have to come up with a number that I could divide 10 by, 15 by, and 40 by. I notice that they all end in a 5 or a 0, so I can divide them by... 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 40 divided by 5 is 8. Here's the next layer. I notice that 2 and 8 have a common factor of 2, but they don't share that factor with 3. You can't divide 3 by 2. So these three numbers don't share any common factors. 1 and you're done. Get the frosting. 5 times 1 equals 5. So the largest number that I could divide 10, 15, and 40 by is 5. It doesn't matter how many numbers you have for GCF. You can make a cake that's as big as you want. Now we're going to talk about common multiples, and this is going to lead us into LCM, which is least common multiple. We're just going to start with the common multiple part. Now every single number has infinite multiples. So we're not going to be listing out every single possible multiple, but we'll list out a couple of examples. Multiples of 8 include 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, uh, six, uh, 64, uh, 72, and 80. I'll stop there. 10 has multiples that include 10, 20, 30, 
40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. Goes on, but I'm just going to stop the list there. Looking for the common multiples in the list, I see that they both have 40 and 80 in the list. And I could have gone on and listed more multiples, but these are a couple multiples. The least multiple that they have in common, the smallest number that they both share, is 40. So 40 is the LCM of 8 and 10. Now this method, again, is okay for small numbers, but once you get big numbers, you will be listing for hours before you find one they have in common. We don't want to do that, so we can also use the cake to find um, the LCM. So if I put 8 and 10 into a cake, and I make the cake the exact same way as I would for GCF, I take 2 on the outside, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 10 divided by 2 is 5, 1, and you're done. I can see, this isn't what I'm asking, but I can see that the GCF is going to be 2 times 1. So the GCF is going to be 2 times 1, which is 2. And I can use the exact same cake to find the LCM. Now LCM likes additional frosting, extra frosting. Not only do we circle the numbers on the side, but we also are going to circle the numbers in the bottom row of the cake. Notice how that makes an L shape for LCM. So the LCM is going to be 2 times 1 times 4 times 5, and that's 40. The GCF of 8 and 10 is 2. The LCM of 8 and 10 is 40, and you can use the same cake to find both of them. Let's try another one. Let's try 12 and 40. So if I put 12 and 40 in a cake, I know I could divide them both by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 40 divided by 2 is 20. 6 and 20 also have a common factor of 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 20 divided by 2 is 10. 3 and 10 do not have a common factor besides 1. For LCM, I want the L-shaped frosting. So I start by circling the numbers I'd use for GCF, but then I extend it to get the numbers in the bottom row. So the LCM of 20 and 40 is going to be whatever 2 times 2 times 1 times 3 times 10 is. That's 4. That's 30. I know 4 times 3 is 12. Add a 0, 120. The least common multiple of 12 and 40 is 120. And if you're wondering, the GCF is going to be 4 because of the 2, 2, and 1. Try 18 and 36. Pause the video, do it on scratch paper, come back when you're ready to watch. All right, hopefully you've figured out the GCF of 18 and 36. 18 and 36, I could divide them both by 18, actually. And you might have chosen a different number, and that's fine. 18 divided by 18 is 1. 36 divided by 18 is 2. 1 and 2 only have a common factor of 1. 1 and you're done. Your cake might look different, but as long as you made it correct, you will still get the same answer as me. So I need to do 18 times 1 times 1 times 2. That equals 36. It actually happens to be one of the numbers, and that's because 36 is a multiple of 18. So the least